if I walk past anyone and I'm talking, they're probably going to think I'm a crazy man that talks to himself. Well, I guess I am a crazy man talking to himself, looking back at my videos. <laughs> so this is a, a rest area not far from when you uh, get into Utah. I want to say maybe 20 miles in maybe 30 miles or at least it felt that way I don't think I'm too far in let's go up here this is a bit of a steep one what do you think maybe a 30% grade here maybe 40 no big deal I sprint up these maybe not anytime recently and I'm not about to do it now and fall down and that'll be a really bad day. I still I still have to drive. I'm about an hour away from getting to my destination. I'll tell you today's been a weird day. Yesterday my first drive ever since getting back on the road this week was 666 miles. A little bit crazy. I've been having bad luck lately, so maybe that's part of the reason. So. What's that? Oh, this? <laughs> it's very simple, but it works. <laughs> Thanks. You know, it's nice sometimes to be able to have a change of pace, to come out and enjoy. special treat for you this evening. A young man that you all know is Joe the Policeman from the What's Going Down episode of That's My Mama. I want you to put your hands together and welcome him to the stage. Big round of applause for Jackson Heights' own. It's an outlaw here. We're on I-40 right now driving through this windmill farm. You got it to the you can see all the way out to the horizon right now. I mean, this is just absolutely amazing. You gotta be kidding me right now. Hopefully, uh, everything goes smoothly for the rest of the trip. Hoping to get about 650 miles in today. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. So, you know what? He's a garbage mount. It's absolute. That boy is good. Mm -hmm. Good and terrible. Hey everyone, welcome back. Another truck driving vlog here. We are in Wyoming and uh, heading to Utah. Heading to Salt Lake City, Utah. So, overall, uh, it's been a pretty good pretty good trip so far. I've been running into a bunch of construction zones though lately. So I've been into situations like this for a better part of today. Reminds me of Indiana and Ohio, the construction that they have going on there. It gets to be a little bit tedious. Sometimes it just seems like they set out the orange cones for decorations, you know, <laughs> like Christmas. Like everyone sets out uh, Christmas trees and all those uh, things for the holiday spirit. <clears throat> so, anyway, wanna talk about a few things in this video here. Things that can help out new drivers, things that can help out old drivers, maybe a rant here and there, you know, my overall experiences. But I wanna start off with talking about my 2022 Freightliner that GP Transco has graciously given me for the next few years. So, let's see here. Let's start off with my main screen. This right here. So you can cycle with the button over here. Well, it's not really, it's a button, but it's also a little, like a little pad that you can 
move around. It reminds me of the old Blackberry Curves, if any of you remember those. The Blackberry Bold and the Blackberry Curve, that little touch sensor it has on the center of the phone. This steering wheel has two of those, one on each side. So on the left side, I've got my cruise control, I've got my uh, blinkers, you know, if, if I want to thank someone. Now with 2022, they did away with my head my headlight um, dimmer. So I have to do it the old fashioned way if I want to let someone in. I just, it's kind of raining a little, so I turn on my trailer lights and my fog lights there. That's the way Outlaw likes to run. <laughs> but uh, when you have your cruise control screen, this is what happens. The screen gets a little bit wider and you've got, well, I mean, the screen is always the same size, but it appears larger because you've got your tachometer and your speedometer. Your speedometer is on the left-hand side, and then you have a large digital reading, and then you've got your tachometer. So it's like one of those old-school 70s town cars or Cadillacs, I think. Kind of like a retro feel to it. That's my impression. Um, of course, over here, it's too small to see it, I'm sure, but that vehicle in front of me is going 75 miles per hour, and he's pulling away at about 350 feet. And now it, it finally just disappeared. The maximum range on that is about 600 feet. And uh, looks like right now it came back, he's at about 500 feet, he's going 74 miles an hour. So that gives me a real time readout. As soon as someone comes out, Within about five or six hundred feet or so, it will give me a readout of their speed and how far away they're pulling from me or how fast I'm gaining on them. As a truck driver, that, that is an invaluable tool. A lot of times, you know, you see these old school truck drivers, they it's hard to gauge how fast the car in front of them is going a lot of times. So they go right up to the car and then they go in the left lane and it's pretty dangerous to do that, to get that close to someone. So this tool, I mean, it, that's what it really is. It's a tool that helps you out, out here on the road, so you don't get too close to anyone. Well, it's a little bit windy out here today. It's tossing my truck around like a sailboat. I'm at 72,000 pounds, but I feel like I'm driving a little car. And I'm fighting to keep this thing on the road right now. It's not, I mean, it's not horrible. I'm probably making it sound worse than it really is. Hey, man, I got you, man. What in the world is going on there? Sometimes you have crazy people on the CB radio. <laughs> or maybe he's complaining about the wind. <laughs> but I couldn't understand him very much. So. This truck is equipped with the auto rain sensing wipers but I like to keep that off. I like to control my own truck. So going on with that same thing, I don't like this cruise control. I mean, it's not even so much the E-Coast that I don't like. It's more, let's get in the left lane. Oh God, we're about to run over a tire. No, we didn't. <laughs> Luckily, Outlaw ran right in the center of it, but I hate this. Oversized load, and he got a flat tire. That's, that's pretty bad. That's a bad place to have a flat, right around that corner. Right when it's slightly damp, too. If someone messes up, that's it. You gotta be careful right when it starts to rain. The road, you know, mixing up with the oil, the water and the oil, it makes it really slick. so beautiful out here. Oh, that sucks. I can't put my window up. Oh, no. <laughs> it better not rain. <laughs> oh, no. Come on, truck. Come on, truck. No, this has never happened before. <laughs> I'm driving, I was gonna give you all a tour of all my little things on here, you know, 
Now my <laughs> oh, this is. Does that side work? Okay, that side works. But this side doesn't work. Come on, truck. We need to look for a rest area. <laughs> if it starts raining, I, I see a big old cloud up there. If it starts raining, I'm gonna be so mad. <laughs> oh no. So. Come on, Freightliner. Come on. Oh, we're heading right into a rainstorm. This was not planned at all. The Adventures of Outlaw. <laughs> Let's see what happens then. I, I guess, I don't know how uh, good you all will be able to hear me with all this wind noise. I just wanted to enjoy the weather a little bit. This has literally not happened to me even once in the entire time that I've had my 2022. And I've got about 36,000 miles. Yeah, I hope we run into a rest area here because Ah, the road is a little bit wet too, so I hope it doesn't uh, start to drain all of a sudden. Come on. Come on. Come on, truck. You're letting me down here. Oh, no. What's going to happen here if it doesn't roll up and I run into a major storm? Okay, good. Looks like the storm is that way. So if, as long as it stays out that way, we're good. Anyway, let's talk about how much I love this 2022. What the hell is going on here? Going into a tunnel here. It's a little bit windy out there. I just had to do that. Maybe now it'll roll up. No? Oh no, it's raining. Oh no. So it's raining and there's strong winds possible. Best to start slowing it down here. Especially uh, with the tanker endorsement, you know, this is uh, one of the things that you'll learn is you don't want to go crazy with taking the turns too fast. You know, that water sloshing around and the pallets there. They're pretty big, heavy pallets. And uh, yeah. So just because you see other guys that like to go quick doesn't mean that you should. So looks like this guy is in a bit of a rush here. He could be uh, pretty lightweight though. Like a wise man once said, when they're lightweight, you know that, that's they get cocky and. Uh, that's how they lose it. You gonna make it up this grade with a load this heavy? It's not the getting up, it's the getting down. Now check him out. He's cocky because he's got a light load. But over on the back side, if he misses a gear or doesn't break just right, he's gonna lose it. Can't you just hit the brakes? Load this heavy, we just fry him. What if something just like jumps out in front of you and you have to stop? Don't. What was that? A monster. Okay, so it's definitely raining now. This is not how this video was supposed to go. Yeah, I'm getting wet. Oh no. 
Oh, oh wow. It's windy and raining. <laughs> Come on, truck. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, this is... <laughs> All I can do is laugh. <laughs> this is... Oh, no. Come on. Oh, I'm going to get soaked here. Jesus. I guess now would be a great time for a review of my truck. Well, I don't like it right now. I'll tell you, if, if there's one big con, it's that this isn't working. You know, this happened on my 2021 as well. This happened on my 2021 Freightliner Cascadia. The window just all of a sudden stopped working for a day. And then it magically started to work after that. And then another weird thing happened is my dome light all the way up there would just turn on and off all night or all evening. So it pretty much distracted me. I had to cover it up. I'm sorry, we seem to be having some technical difficulties. Hey guys, we're back. I don't know what happened with the video there, it cut off, but I was able to get the window fixed. I pulled over to a truck stop and uh, the rain did get a little bit worse before it got better, but thankfully uh, I didn't get too wet in here and I didn't, get, I didn't get too upset about the whole situation. So I don't know why that happened, I don't know how it happened, but you know, if something is made by a man, then it's probably gonna break down eventually. So, other than that, I have had no issues with this uh, 2022 Cascadia. That's really just a fluke that it happened right as I was enjoying the day. And it was, a, it was pretty good. It was a pretty good day. And then all of a sudden, what are the chances, right? What are the chances that I'm enjoying a video, you know, I'm enjoying making a video. I want to share the scenery. I put the window down and then it starts to rain as soon as I realize <laughs> This won't roll up. I swear, the luck that I'm having lately. But hey, it must have happened for a reason. I was meant to get off and stop the truck. So the way I see it, uh, there is a reason for everything. So we'll just chalk it up to that. Let's see here. So I was gonna finish up this review of the truck, or as far as the features and such. So let's see here. I already covered that side there with all the gauges and things like that. So I usually like to leave my coolant and oil pressure. I think those two are some of your most important things. Those two alone can let you know if anything major is about to happen with the truck. So going here, you can adjust your radio station. Let's just say you don't want to use your right hand, right? So on this truck, your main radio controls and everything are, are on the right hand side, but you can also use the left. So I just click on this, it's on Pop Rocks, and just flick it up. So I can just go here. So. Now, the only thing about doing it this way is it just literally flicks through all the Sirius XM channels. It does not go through your saved presets. If you wanna go through your presets, that's when you exit out of this here, or you can leave that there just to show you what song is on. I usually do that. If I'm on Sirius XM, it'll show me what song is playing. So I'll leave that right there. What's that guy doing? He's just driving on the shoulder. What in the world? I swear, I don't know if you guys can see it. I know sometimes the angle of this video, it's hard to see my mirrors exactly, but that guy was driving on the shoulder for God only knows how long. So, 
And it just gives you a little bit more flexibility. If your right hand is tied up for whatever reason, you know, if you're, if you're busy making a sandwich or eating food, then hey, you've got your left hand that you can flick through the radio station so you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you shouldn't be eating while you drive. That's distracted driving. <laughs> anyway, let's go on over to the right hand side here because I already covered the left. So the right, right hand side, you got your volume controls, you got your Bluetooth to answer and hang up, your mute button and your back button. So right now I'm gonna push back and it brings me to this main screen right here. So my smartphone, if I was to connect it, it's for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, depending on what you have, if you have an Apple phone, um, iPhone rather. Uh, so if you connect it to that, it brings you right to it. So you connect this, you know, right into your dash here on the right hand side and then connect this to your phone. I'm not going to go through that because if you don't care about these things, then you're, you're not going to care about what I say. And those of you that have it know how this thing works with your cars and all of that anyway. So we're not going to go through that. That's, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's nothing I need to go through. You got the media here if you connect your Bluetooth to the radio to the whole system here if you sync it up you can play straight from Bluetooth if you want I usually just go off of Apple CarPlay I'll put on YouTube music or Pandora or just whatever you got your Sirius XM right here I've got all my presets saved so I've got pop rocks I've got pop 2k 80s on 8 90s on 9 road trip and then on my next screen here, I've got Lithium, Hair Nation, Rock Bar, XL Turbo, Octane. And then if we scroll over, I've got more. There's about 20 presets you can have. So you will never get bored out here on the road. You, you'll always have something with Sirius XM, which GP provides on their trucks, which is pretty cool. Not all of their trucks, but the 2022s have them at least. That's my phone, the S21 Ultra. It, the truck will recognize it this is your chassis tab you know you can take a look at your um, you know just the overview of the truck and the axles and you know just I usually don't use the screen because it's pretty much for the shop they put in their maintenance items you can put the service intervals in here pretty nifty you don't have to have paper logs necessarily but I still recommend if you're an owner operator to keep paper logs of everything that you do and when you do it. Active alerts. Now, I always like to keep an eye on my gauges in general because if a truck needs to tell you if something is wrong, then I mean, what if something goes wrong and it's not able to tell you and you're driving around with your coolant heating up or your engine oil pressure is too low, right? And I know too many folks out there just don't care about those things they don't care about the coolant temperature they don't care about the oil pressure they don't even have a road atlas in their truck <laughs> I mean hey not a big deal if you're used to driving the roads that you drive on and you don't need an atlas anymore that's fine but I think every truck driver needs a basic road atlas because if you're relying on a navigation system to get you from point A to point B you are wrong that's just the same as having a automatic restriction on your CDL. I'm just kidding it. <laughs> I'm going off on a tangent on that, but you know, it, it just it just goes to show. It. I mean, it's it seems to be linked that these days it seems like those folks that do have the auto restriction kind of lost touch with the old ways, the classic way of doing it with the road atlas, your truck stop book, you know, because what happens when your electronics fail you? Well, I'll tell you what some drivers do. They pull over and they frantically start making phone calls that their navigation stopped working. So a lot of drivers will have multiple navigation systems as a backup, but let's just say all of them go bad. Then, then what do you do? You gotta do things the old school way. And a lot of people don't know about that. And I'm, I'm thankful that my trainer made me, uh, even though I wanted to use the navigation, he said, nope, you're gonna do things the old school way because one day 
it will benefit you. And I'm glad that he trained me that way. I'm so glad I didn't have a trainer that said, yeah, go ahead, use your truck navigation and you're good to go. So the navigation is a tool, you know, it, and I do use it these days. Yes, I use it, it's a tool, it helps me. But it's important to have an overview of your route what highway you're getting on, when you're getting off, this and that, just in case of an emergency. Anyway, I just went off on a rant there. It seems like each of my videos have some kind of a rant in them. So let's go to the cab chassis here. This is a pretty important one because I click on that and then I go to driver assistance and I turn off this e-coast. Now if someone can tell me how to turn off this silly cruise control, I don't know who specked out our trucks this way or who at Freightliner came up with this system, but there are times when you want to turn off this silly system that makes you go seven or eight miles per hour slower than what you set your cruise at. So you could be cruising along at 55 miles per hour, you set your cruise, and then the truck all of a sudden starts to slow down to 47 or 48 miles an hour because it thinks there's a hill. And then there, there isn't a hill and you're not really that fully loaded so you can't use the momentum to speed you up. So, trust me when I say, if anyone at GP Transco Management, if you're watching this video, I'm not sure if they are, but if, if they are, we don't like this cruise control. Do a poll on all your drivers, ask them how many think it's dangerous. I think it's a dangerous system because there are times when it has wanted to slam its brakes and I just barely caught it in the nick of time. So you talk about load shift, you talk about potentially sliding around, you know, if it locks up the brakes or whatever the system, it might not lock up the brakes, I might be going a little too far on that because uh, it is, it's meant to do that, but anyway, let's just say you have someone right behind you, like these days you always have these truck drivers who are falling right behind you and then you start slowing down and then all of a sudden the truck just breaks out of nowhere. I'm a professional, I expect to be treated like one and the truck as much as I love this truck and these newer trucks, I don't like this technology here. So it's, I know it's supposed to help and I'll guarantee you this does help against the steering wheel holders out there. And by them, I mean, that person waved at me. <laughs> and by them, I mean the people who are just not professionals. They're the ones who, you see them every day, they wear the flip flops at the shivers and receivers or they're uh, you know, I have no problems with the ones that wear them at the truck stop and all that, but, you know, actually, I don't even care what you wear. I'm just saying, when you're at a shipper and a receiver and you're standing in line in front of me and I have to look at your nasty feet, and I don't look down there, it's just all out there, you know, when you're out there in your sandals walking around, it's, it's not a good image for your company when you're doing that at a shipper or a receiver or a professional environment. When you're walking around shirtless out there, when you're walking around in your shorts, aka your underwear, yes, I've seen that, and I've seen it this year. That, that's, it's pretty damn nasty, so I see a lot of that these days, and that's why a lot of folks don't respect truck drivers these days. So, and that change starts with the new guys, so I'm hoping a lot of new guys will watch this video and you know, maybe get some tidbits of info here and there. Some people just don't know any better. That's just the way they've done things their whole life, and it is what it is. Anyway, the Eco system, it's not the Eco that I don't like, it's the silly cruise control, which, you know, senses a hill and then it just lets off. So even if you, I have this turned off. And by the way, I still ranked pretty darn high on our fuel economy charts, so, even without this, and I don't use this, I still get good fuel economy. So let's get rid of this system if we can. If we can do something about it, maybe one day, maybe GP, if someone's listening. Destroy it! No. You see, dude? It should have ended that day that evil was allowed to endure. So that's that. System settings, I usually like to go at nighttime. If, you know, after a certain time it starts getting darker, I'll go to brightness, I'll go to dash, and I'll bring the brightness down. And you can see right now I brought the brightness down a 
fair amount. You can still see everything fairly well, but I like to keep it all the way up. And then at nighttime, I start gradually bringing it down. So, why do they get in front of you and then slow down like that? I just don't get it. Anyway, let's see, what do we have here? The most important screen, your gauges. So you click on this, have an eye on your coolant temperature, your engine oil pressure, your transmission oil temperature, and your oil temperature. So you've got a little bit of everything, and that's on your first page. There's a second page, so you can click on the screen if you want, or use this little scroller, or the buttons, you know, whatever. They give you options here with this truck. So you've got your soot level for your uh, DEF, you know, the emission system, your turbo boost pressure, your front axle oil pressure, and your rear axle oil pressure. And then this one right here, your suspension air pressure. And if you've been driving long enough, you can look at your suspension air uh, pressure and just be able to tell if you're overweight on your drives or not. It's a pretty easy way to tell. So it's a good tool to help. Uh, we're, it doesn't look like a hill here, but it, it truly is. We're struggling to pull up this hill. With, uh, we're at about 72,000 pounds, roughly. Anyway, I think that's that pretty much covers it. That gives you a little bit of a tour of all of this. Now, like I said, Android Auto, it is a very good system. It, uh, on this truck, very intuitive. The only thing you'll find is you cannot use Google Maps. It just won't let you. Now you can bring up Google Maps, put on satellite image view, and just drive along that way. And you can drive, and it, it really does help. You can zoom in and out, but you cannot put a destination on there. Okay, truck. I hear you, truck. Anytime I get right next to the line, now, I probably won't do it right now because it just did it, but if I get right up to it like this, I could be an inch away and it'll start. Yep, I'm not even near a line right now and it doesn't. <laughs> okay, truck, thank you. What would I do without you, truck? I don't like this silly system right here which yells at you all the time for nothing. I know some companies don't opt for that feature, but I think it's due to insurance reasons. It probably helps GP save money on insurance. That's probably why they have it. Oh, I wanted to show you guys something nifty on the 2022s. So if you go to lighting, there's the lighting tab. Now on the 2021s, they have the buttons right here, which they still do on the 22s, which turn on your ceiling lights and the ambient light. But the cool thing about this truck is you can click on this and you can manually adjust your light you know it's got a gauge and you can manually adjust it from bright you know you can dim it as much as you want so as bright as you want and then dim it as much as you want right here you know through this right here I don't want to I don't want to look up but that, that's all the way bright but I can make it go to 75% brightness I can make it go to 50% so really you can do a lot of things here with this pretty nifty and that's for the sleeper you got your front adjust the front as well so it, it, this is a pretty cool system here that should be a little bit of a tour those of you who aren't too sure about how these new trucks work um, they are very intuitive and uh, I've always admired them you know the 22 uh, 2022s when they came out I said that's pretty nifty I didn't think I would like it as much as I did, you know, it's, I don't think I could go back to a 21 right now, or any older truck, so if I became an owner operator, that would be a pretty tough switch right now after being used to all this, but I don't like that cruise control, that's, oh, that's a sneaky, that is a sneaky officer right there, I'm trying to catch a speeder out here, that's how they get you and the unmarked units that go after trucks and 18-wheelers. Anyway, that's it for this vlog. I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.
गया है